what are you going to do when shots don't go in? You're going to have to figure out a different way to score, and you're going to have to figure out a different way to win a game. And it's not, you know, you don't just go out there and say, well, we're going to get 100 today. I mean, that just doesn't happen all the time. So you have to be able to win 100 to something, and you have to be able to win 70 to something. I mean, that's what good teams do. And sometimes we forget that because we score so easily. And you're right, today was a, a good reminder. It was a good game for us going into tomorrow and next week. No question. It was, it was a good reminder of how tough the postseason is going to be, a physical battle between UConn and UCF. And, Helen, you heard him, Coach Gino Oriama, saying they kind of just had to, to feel out the game a little bit, get some, you know, get some game experience under their skin, rather step up their defense. UCF is a tough, tough physical squad. But towards the end of the first half, we start to see UConn do what UConn does best. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get started when you're used to playing a team a couple of times. Uh, here you see Kia Nurse with the steal. Got fouled there, kept going anyway. Now she has an uh, opportunity to shoot free throws. And then you see here her giving them the outside shot that they, they really need from her on a consistent basis. You see here Samuelson, nice little extra pass to Sanaya Chong there. And then Gabby Williams doing what she does, using her athleticism to get an extra opportunity for UConn. And here you have her sharing the ball with her buddy Nafisa Collier for another two points. And then Katie Samson with a nice little outlet pass there for Kia Nurse to finish strong with the two. Once again, Katie Samson doing what she does, shooting a three-pointer, missing it, and then Collier tapping it to herself and able to score again and get the end one. Yeah, that was a 15-4 run in just five minutes and 30 seconds. That ultimately changed the score of this game from 30 to 23, Holland, to 45 to 27. So five minutes, UConn can do quite a bit of damage, a tough loss for UCF, but Coach Abe is changing the culture at UCF. Hear what she had to say yesterday. Um, well, I'm just really, really proud of our team and, you know, just the big picture overall. Um, 20 wins last year, we won, they won seven games and this year we won 20. Um, and you see that there's still a lot of fight left in them and you know, that was the biggest thing for me, big picture, was to train our players to hate to lose. Um, and now they're to that point that they're going to fight all the way down for 40 minutes no matter what. And, you know, and that's it's really how I want their mindsets to be all the time. And, and so I was just really proud of their effort, especially in the, you know, first two quarters. I mean, we fought really, really hard. The, you know, the third quarter, it wasn't really good for us. And then the fourth quarter, we came back and fought too. So... I mean, overall, for our coaching staff, it was just really all about fight, effort, um, just playing hard and playing hard for 40 minutes. So I'm just really proud of them. Please wait there from Coach Abe. That tough to – that – hate to lose mentality is what led them to their 20 win season a great season for UCF they'll head home to Orlando and we'll look at the highlights from the second semifinal of the day in just a little bit but coming up next we're going to get some insight on the tournament it's the associate commissioner of the American Athletic Conference Barbara Jacobs joining us up next we're Frontier Communications we're dedicated to delivering the services that make your life easier every day, like ultra-fast internet, no data caps, and access to up to 150,000 video on-demand titles. We also offer solutions to keep your business running smoothly and the tools you need to keep your digital life secure. We serve and support millions of communities across the country with premium products like Fios and Vantage by Frontier. Visit Frontier.com today to learn more about our best offer ever. center and that is over the wall and gone. There it is. Fly ball deep to left field. This one is gone. And it wasn't an easy road to get here. No, no question. They had to go through Cincinnati, Temple, and Memphis. Through the Change. I said, yes, you do the same. Back to the 
2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship. We're live here in the pregame before tip tonight against UConn and USF. I'm Haley Out and joined alongside the Associate Commissioner of the American Athletic Conference for Women's Basketball, Barbara Jacobs, and Helen Williams. Barbara, thanks for joining us today. It's been an outstanding tournament, a very competitive tournament, but just talk about the atmosphere here at Mohegan Sun the past few days. Come. the fans that are coming from all over uh, from some of the teams everything is great I mean we broke our attendance re record yesterday in two of the sessions and hopefully we'll do it again tonight it should be a packed house tonight but taking a look at just some of the other teams in the tournament here these past few days Barbara I know you mentioned it the other day but the level of competition in this league has continued to grow each year but I think we for sure saw it here the past few days yeah they came to play um, we, we knew that our league was getting better but we really are getting better. Um, the, the bottom teams have come up, uh, the middle teams have gone up, and, uh, and our RPI right now is um, five in the country. We're actually ahead of the Big Ten at this point. Yeah, that's very impressive. Helen, if you want to chime in, I'll give you <laughs> Well, yeah, I wanted to ask you, uh, earlier in the year, you know, you had some teams that had some opportunities to maybe get some at-large bid. You had Tulane, uh, UCF. How do you see, uh, obviously, UC at USF, they're at a, a nine seed right now, and you've got Temple that's at an eight seed in the, in the, in the bracket. But do you see any opportunity maybe for maybe some other teams that get some postseason play? Yeah, we, we, we think that we'll have a, two or three teams get into the WNIT. We're pretty sure that um, UCF will get into the WNIT. They're our next best record-wise, so they get an automatic from our conference. Then after that, um, could be Cincinnati, could be Memphis. It just depends on what the WNIT is looking for. And you see UConn do it year after year after year, but do you ever get tired of that excellence? I mean, he just, I was watching him in practice today, and everything was about detail, 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 yet then he pulls Katie Samuel aside, Samuelson aside, and he's talking about how great she is and telling her what she's got to do tonight to be even better. Yes, he, he knows how to get the best out of his players. And you're right, he's extremely detailed. He, um, he demands perfection every day he demands perfection and but you know you can't you can strive to be perfect right but I, I don't think anybody can ever be perfect in basketball but he wants them to strive to be perfect every single day okay. Well, Barbara, looking at tonight's game against UConn and USF, USF and UConn, they both lost so many impressive players last year. Four top ten picks in the WNBA draft. That's not easy to replace, but here here they are yet again for the third year in a row. What does that just say about the consistency of both of these programs, both for Coach Jose Fernandez and Gino Oriema, that they're here and they're playing on Monday night for the third year in a row for USF and fourth for UConn? Well, they, both, of the, both of them have, have built a culture where the players basically are the ones that force the younger players to come in and be part of the team. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, the coach doesn't have to get on them. The players get it. The upperclassmen get on, get on them. They, this is what we do at UConn. We're going to do it this way. If you don't want to be here, go. It's just the way it is. And the same thing at USF. They want their players to do certain things. They want them to present themselves a certain way. And they all do it together. Well, they both fought hard to get to this point here tonight, the one seed and the three seed. I won't make you pick because I know you're rooting for a good game. <laughs> won't put you in that position, but thanks for joining us here on the set and putting on another great tournament here at Mohegan Sun. It's been a lot of fun, so thank you. And the athletes are excited and eager to get out on the court tonight, but coming up next, we're going to take a look at what they want to do after basketball. Stay with us. Thank you. Lately, when I've been in college, I've been, you know, <laughs> Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship, March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Be there as all 11 American teams compete for the conference crown and an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Single game and championship weekend ticket packages are on sale this month and can be purchased online at excelcenter.com or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. 
Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. We're Frontier Communications. We're dedicated to delivering the services that make your life easier every day, like ultra-fast internet, no data caps, and access to up to 150,000 video on-demand titles. We also offer solutions to keep your business running smoothly and the tools you need to keep your digital life secure. We serve and support millions of communities across the country with premium products like Fios and Vantage by Frontier. Visit Frontier.com today to learn more about our best offer ever. Welcome back to the American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship. There's no question we're about to witness some serious talent on the court tonight, but there will come a day when this life comes to an end, and we'll have to look beyond college. So we're going to take a look at what some of these players are looking to do when they hang up the shoes. Lately, when I've been in college, I've been, you know, just looking at the way Coach Stockton just has an awesome life as a coach. It's really really inspired me to look into that, looking to see if I want to uh, be a college coach and um, continue to share what I've learned through her and through other coaches um, and just have that passion and keep it, to continue it throughout my life. Right now I'm in media studies and production, so I want to do some behind the camera. And then if that doesn't work out, I just want to become a head coach one day. As of now, I either want to be a personal fitness trainer um, and get into that world or go into broadcasting and be like a play-by-play -play commentator. Um, well, my plan right now is to become a registered nurse and then if I can go back to school, then probably to become, I don't know, I kind of want to specialize in uh, neonatal care. So I'm majoring in clinical psychology and so I really want to pursue that and go far with that. Uh, once I'm done at Memphis, um, I'll probably go for my master's and then PhD, trying to go from there. I see myself as a biomedical engineer who hopefully graduated with, you know, above a 3.0 so she can go get a master's. I see myself probably entering into the phase of trying to get into medical school. I also see myself as someone that anyone else on my team could still call to, to this day, you know, in the future and ask for advice. A lot of big dreams and goals for when basketball does come to an end. And Helen, that's something that UCF head coach Katie Abrahamson Henderson has really focused on, empowering the women on her team to look beyond basketball and prepare for the future. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that I... Trying to empower women all the time. I'm trying to teach them to fight no matter what. This is just this, this is a small platform to me personally. I want Zai to go out in the world and fight for whatever she, it is she wants and not quit, not let down, and not give up. That's what I want. I don't want Joss to do that either. So um, that's the biggest thing. You know, you see this game and there was fight 40 minutes. I mean, I'm not going to just tell them, oh, okay, stop, let's concede. I don't ever want our players to ever be like that as a woman, um, to not go out and fight, not, you know, be strong and, and be empowered. And I see, think that's what I see in them. You know, and it's it's fun to watch. Um, you know, they I, KK was coming in the timeouts and, you know, saying things, and Aaliyah was saying, keep fighting, and Josh was saying, keep fighting. And before, when I first got here, I was saying it all the time, right? So now they've done it. They, they're they there. And Yeah, Helen, in yesterday's game against UConn, UCF showed so much fight and so much effort. And what I thought was very interesting is, you know, in the final minutes of the game when they knew that their road in the postseason was going to come to an end, they literally played until the very last second, high pressure the whole way. Yeah, and that's what you learn about sports. It's a great thing that she's talking about empowering women is you teach them that stick to that persistence and that mental toughness and that you just keep going no matter what. Well, having that mentality is definitely a sign of good things to come for the future of that UCF women's basketball program. But up next, we're going to take a look at this matchup a little bit more as USF prepares for the finals. We'll look back at yesterday's semifinal against Temple. And we're actually going to take a look right now. Here's the first <laughs> That's all right. We'll keep it rolling. Kitty Alaska, she's been great all season long off the screen for a three. But Temple USF, we knew this one was going to be a battle. We saw it in the regular season. Fionda Fitzgerald, the senior leader, step back, jumper right there. Temple up 6-4. to four. Here's Tanea Atkinson, another dangerous player on this Temple squad. That's going to cause USF to take an early timeout. And then Temple, a little bit of a lapse on defense. 
Tamara Henshaw, the freshman, wide open with the layup. But you know Temple's going to respond. Aliyah Butts hits a transition three. This one's going to be neck to neck for a while. Temple up 17 8. Loxka, she's come up in the clutch all week long, keeping her team in it, hitting the tough jumper. And her teammate, Maria Jesperson, has been doing pretty well too, getting it done with the drive. Temple up 17 to 12. And here's another member of this full squad. I've seen a lot of minutes in the past couple of days. Adriana Puyol getting involved, going coast to coast. USF cutting that deficit. Second quarter, Tamara Henshaw, the freshman of the year, scoring inside. USF up 20 to 19. But here's Temple, Sophia Martin. She doesn't get a ton of buckets, Helen, but she made the most of her touches, putting in six points yesterday. Puyol on the drive, finds Henshaw. She'll lay it up. Great game by the freshman. And some love from her teammates. But Temple, here they come. Sophia Martin finds the ball again. Answers inside with the putback. Temple now up again with the lead, 23-22. Maria Jesperson was clutch yesterday, hitting a long jumper. USF back in front. We're going to see a lot of lead changes in this one. Both teams wanting to punch their ticket to the final. Jesperson again hits a three on her next trip down. USF up 27-23. Henshaw, give, it, give her some room. She's going to take the shot. Hits the jumper. Second quarter comes to a close here in the third quarter. Here's Loxka. Tough jump shot there. She sinks that one. USF up 35-30. to There she is. Aaliyah Butts knocks down the three from outside. Cuts the lead to two. Kitty Alaksa to Jesperson. Long range three. USF up 40 to 35 now. Loxka gets the clear out. She's going to drive this one in herself. Put down the two. But Temple's not giving up yet. Here late in the third quarter, Fitzgerald knocks down the jumper, hangs and hits it. USF up 42 to 37. Not a lot of jumpers falling for Fitzgerald, so let's do it a different way. Gets it done on the drive, cuts the lead down. And in the fourth quarter, USF, Laya Flores with the layup, doesn't get it. USF up 44 to 41. Fourth quarter, 7 10 to go. Laya Flores from outside. Here's Kitty Aloxa. She's been clutch all week when her team needs her. Again, tough layup. Gets it to go. USF up 49 to 41. Adriana Puyol feeds it to Zesperson. Misses it, but she's going to get her own bucket back. Feeds it outside to Aloxa. It's a tough shot. USF up 52 to 41. 309 to go. Here's Puyol. Throws it up for two. And that's pretty much going to do it. Final box score right there. Maria Jesperson, 14 points, 13 rebounds. The freshman Tamara Henshaw, 15 points, 6 rebounds. Kitty Alaska adds 18. Helen, what was the difference in you to this one? Obviously a tough battle back and forth. Both teams really wanting to punch their ticket to the final for a chance to meet UConn. What was the difference to you? Well, the difference was that they were, they shot 46% from three-point range. I mean, they've got those big guards, and they, they come off screens. They roll to the basket, and uh, Temple couldn't seem to stop them from those three-point shots. Yeah, when I had a chance to catch up with Coach Jose Fernandez yesterday, it's been two gutsy wins for his team, putting in a lot of effort. It hasn't always been pretty, but in the end, he's gotten the W. Here's what he had to say following yesterday's semifinal game. Last night was a tough game, another tough game tonight. Four of your players played the entire game yesterday and then again in the first half today. How are they doing physically? I told you that last night it was going to happen. Uh, you know, we are who we are. That's where we're at. We, I mean, we really don't have perimeter subs. So... Um, it'll be the same thing tomorrow night. And then defensively, a great improvement today. What kind of adjustments did you make from yesterday's game? I just think I think we defended. We defended a lot better. I thought we uh, we rebounded definitely on the defensive end of, end of the floor a lot better. I told this group I'm very proud to, you know, third straight year you're playing on Monday night for a conference championship, and uh, with four new starters this year. So, and that was our 24th win. So it's a very big game. 
Yeah, what was the game plan heading into, into tonight? Temple, three great scorers in Atkinson, Butts, and Fitzgerald, and you contained them enough to pull off the win in the end. What was the game plan to kind of control them? Well, we wanted to limit them to one shot and make them shoot over us and not foul. I mean, I think, you know, we did a particularly good job of doing that till the end there where we fouled a three-point shooter uh, to, to make the game interesting. But, um, you know, we moved. USF had a little bit of a slow start in quarterfinals action, but you can kind of feel them getting into the groove here in the postseason, getting a feel for the arena again. They're back to their third straight American Championship final. Helen, they had to really grind and gut that one out yesterday, but even when they weren't making shots, they found a way to get the rebound and get those second chance points. Yeah, well, when you miss a shot, that's okay. You still got to go after the basketball. In the first game that UCF played, they only had six second chance points against uh, UConn. Second game, they had 21. So as you can see here, taking advantage of that, you got Jesperson here missing the jumper, and then they're get the, they get the rebound, and then you're going to give it to your go-to player here. You see her waving off her teammates. Uh, uh, she's going to take the ball, Lassa, and score there. And you give your teammates extra opportunities. That's always going to help. And here you see Flores behind the back. Nice little teardrop. Warrioba cleans it up. Gets another second chance points there for U.S. Uh, and then Jesperson misses it again. And there you go. Gets her own rebound. Gives him another opportunity to clear it out. And a three-point shot there. So that really, really hurt Temple yesterday. Yeah, USF wins it 63-58. to Temple heads back to Philadelphia, but their season's not done quite yet. They have the NCAA tournament to look forward to. And, Helen, a big reason for their success this season has been senior Fayonda Fitzgerald. You can't ignore the work she's done here in the tournament this week. 30 points, a single-game American Athletic Conference yeah. tournament record in the quarterfinals. Another 18 points last night. How successful has she been here in her senior season, and why is she so dangerous? Well, she's dangerous because she can do it all. She can shoot threes. She can shoot layups. You see here, she's on the break. Nice little hesitation there. And it fools her defense, stops, and then goes. A nice little stop and pop. She's really good at that. And she can heat up at any time. And she does a multitude of things for yeah. Temple. No, absolutely. And no question, all the weight isn't on her shoulders, though. She has two other key contributors in Tania Atkinson and Aaliyah Butts. Helen, if all three of those players can really keep the offense rolling, how, big, how much of a shot do they have to make a run in the NCAA tournament? Well, I think they have a really good shot. If they could just get Denasia Fountain back, I mean, they haven't had her for the last few games. She's averaging 14 points and seven rebounds. That would have made a huge difference in the game the other night. So I think they can go far. They may run into uh, to, uh, USC, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, well, we'll look to see what they can do in the postseason. But the postseason here, at least in the conference tournament, isn't done for USF quite yet. They're ready to take the court here in just a few minutes. But Kitty Alaska, she's a key part to this team, and she's one of nine international players. Here's a little bit what Kitty Aloxa had to say earlier this season. Um, they just call me Kid Kitty. Um, I, I just go with it. Come on, Americans. Y'all can't pronounce my name. It's Kitty Aloxa. Easy. Easy as that. Not easy to me. Exactly. USF has three to shoot. Laksa drills it. Tough shot in the corner. Laksa, she's from Latvia, and she buries the three. Laksa again. This time from the same spot, she buries it. Everyone would say that I'm a shooter. Uh, nah, I'm not just a shooter. I'm a basketball player. I want to be versatile. I want to play every single position I can. I want to... I want to score, I want to play defense, I want to block shots. Maybe I want to dunk too, but that's, that's for later. Well, as a freshman to come in and do what she did, she was national um, freshman, freshman of the week. Last year she was unanimous freshman of the year in this conference and, and was picked as one of the 10 best players in the conference. She was also second team all, all league as a freshman, so uh, she had a pretty good year. It was... It was, at first it was just hard, because you're alone. You just don't know what to expect. But once you get on the team, once you meet everyone, once you get to know the coaching staff, players, staff, everything, it, it's just easy. We have a lot of internationals on our team, and it all makes it much more easier. I had good grades. I always had good grades, and it wasn't that hard. Like, at first, maybe, yeah, because like at the university, like you start your classes, and you have those hard lectures. My first lecture was psychology class. They started some terminology, some definitions. I just, I was sat there and I didn't know what, what, well, why am I here? But like, once you're like in a month in school, you just, you just get used to it. It's not that hard.
Right now, USF is my home. I'm far away from Latvia, I'm far away from my family, so USF is my home, my family, my everything right now and here in US. Well, there's no question Kitty Aloxa is a far a ways away from home, but she is just one of nine players that have come overseas to play basketball at USF. Helen, on USF's roster, let's take a look at it here. Portugal, Spain, Hungary, Denmark, Puerto Rico, Kenya, Latvia. Four of the five in the starting lineup have come from overseas to play basketball for head coach Jose Fernandez. Why is women's basketball starting to recruit internationally? Uh, it's easier. I mean, when you have the big power fives, UConn, Notre Dame, South Carolina, they've got the best players locked up already, so it's a lot easier to go overseas and get the best player from a different country than it is to fight those guys for players over here. Yeah, and in order to catch up with the all-time greats like UConn, coaches are just having to get a little bit more creative now and look overseas. Well, USF will look to see if that pays off tonight, but coming up next, we're going to take a look at a team that's been stealing all the headlines this season, the UConn Huskies playing there for their fourth straight American Athletic Conference championship we'll take a look back at the last three stay with us tickets are now on sale for the 2017 frontier communications american athletic conference men's basketball championship march 9th through the 12th at the excel center in hartford be there as all 11 american teams compete for the conference crowns and an automatic bid to the ncaa tournament single game and championship weekend ticket packages are on sale this month and can be purchased online at excelcenter.com or by telephone at 877-522-8499. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together starts with you and continues with us the university of south florida this is a classroom this is a lab this is a study break this is family this is our backyard. This is Yukon. American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship at Mohegan Sun. The Yukon Huskies are playing in their fourth straight American Championship final. Here's a look back to the 2014 season. Some familiar and very legendary faces. Yukon playing Louisville just four years ago in their first conference championship here in the American. UConn winning that one 72 to 52. Kalina Mosqueda Lewis a part of that year's squad. And Brianna Stewart was named the most outstanding player as the Huskies beat Louisville by 20 to win the inaugural American Athletic Conference championship. And they would continue their success rolling in 2015. Kalina Mosqueda Lewis right there hitting the three from outside, something she did quite a bit of in her career at UConn leading her team with 23 points as the Huskies downed USF in 2015 to complete their second undefeated run through the conference. 84 to 70, you see the final score there and a great tournament win for the Huskies in their second season in the conference, but they wanted more. So they found a way to make their way back to the tournament again in 2016 against USF. Here's Mariah Jefferson with the layup. Three big Huskies went top three in the WNBA draft. Brianna Stewart, Morgan Tuck, and Mariah Jefferson. The Huskies had a reason to smile as they completed their third unbeaten run through the American Athletic Conference. And they'll look to claim their fourth straight American title tonight. We're now joined on the set by David Siegel from Dish and Swishin'. He has a great podcast online. Be sure to check it out. David, what has this tournament been like so far? You obviously cover basketball on the national landscape, but how competitive has this tournament been really from top to bottom compared to years past? You know, it's always fun when you have a tournament that has some surprises and some teams like Central Florida that you didn't expect to, to make the big jump that they did this year and succeed, and then you had SMU. And, you know, yes, you still had UConn and a lot of their dominance, but it, it was kind of fun to see these other teams make the move that they did. And no question, UConn still remains that dominant presence. 
teams have been trying to knock him off all year long. And a big reason of that is because of head coach Gino Oriema. And what better way to find out a little bit more about what it's like to play for coach than from the players themselves. The players that come play for us, they understand before they even step on campus, the reason I want to go to Connecticut is I don't want it to be all about me. Matter of fact, there's a pretty good chance if you come to Connecticut, you'll never lead the country in anything, you know, except wins. When I called Coach Dino to congratulate him for winning the title again, I told him we have his room ready uh, for when he gets here. He does seem to spend an awful lot of time here. Gino Oriema's club wins the American Conference again. It's tough in its own way, but it's extremely something that you want in your entire life. And I think I've started to learn the method to his madness, not really because it always changes. Um, but he finds something that you're not doing well and he harps on it. And then as soon as you do it well, he finds something new that you weren't doing well and harps on that. And I think that's what makes him so great, that he's never satisfied with you just being a good player. He wants to push you to elevate you to that next level. I think in some ways it's just different. It's not harder or you know easier. It's just different. You see, you know, growing up watching him on TV, you see all the things that stereotypical, like you see him yelling and stuff. But you know, he's a great coach to play with, and I'm just happy to be here. Um, thick skin, that's for sure. Uh, I've learned to take what he's saying and not necessarily how he's saying it. And also, too, I think what people don't realize is. If he's on you like that and if he's saying something, it's probably a good thing than if he's not saying anything to you because it means that he expects more and he thinks you can do better and he knows you can do better. So it, you almost get kind of excited when he is getting on you because you're like, okay, he thinks I'm more than what I'm showing. Well, I would say that you need to love the game of basketball more than anything because it's, you're going to be put to the test of how much you can handle mentally and there's going to be times where it might not be the most fun, but you know, you have to know that he's pushing you to be the best player you can be and that he ha does it in the, the best interest for you. And I would say that just know that you're going to be pushed, but that you can get through it and you have your teammates to rely on. They're always going to be there for you. Good players, great players, lots of them. Uh, a culture where you expect to win every night. Uh, players that are committed to being coached they enjoy being coached they want you to coach them uh, so all these things are kind of rare and I think that's probably why it doesn't happen very much you know you've got a lot of the opposite of what I just talked about you got a lot of players go to college they don't want to be coached really hard and they don't want demands placed on them and they, they, there isn't a culture of this is how we're going to do it and that's that's all there is to it so Having all those things come together is, is, is not easy. It's not easy. I think anyone coming into the program knows that, you know, they hear about it all the time, they hear about what a tough program and tough coach he is, but you don't actually understand it until you're a part of it. And you know it's going to be hard, but you don't necessarily know how you're going to handle it until it actually happens to you. I think the, the enjoyment that I still get from making something happen for a group of players who maybe wouldn't be able to make it happen on their own. Um, that kind of self-satisfaction that you get when somebody looks at you and goes, wow, coach, I didn't know I could do that. And as long as you know, we feel like we're doing that for, for them, yeah, it, it makes you want to keep doing it. Gino Oriyama has so much passion for the game and no matter who's in his lineup or what kind of team he has, he always finds a way to get the best out of his players and get the best out of his team. David, what makes this year's UConn team so great and just how they've rebounded back from losing so many great players last year? It's been pretty fun to watch this team because you, know, you, you started out a season where nobody was on anybody's All-American list preseason, and now you've got three in the finalists for all of the major awards. No one could have expected Nafisa Collier and Gabby Williams to make the jump that they did, or Sanaya Chong for that matter. But you know, he gets these athletes and they buy in and they are ready to do what their leaders tell them to do to get to be the best players that they can be. One of the things that Gino said to me a couple days ago was that 
the feeling his players experience now when they win games, it feels a little bit different from last year because there's so much balance on this year's team. They're not looking towards any one star to save the day. It really takes a full team effort. How much does having that balance help them in terms of the postseason if somebody is having an off night? Well, I think it's going to be a big plus for this team because the one thing that I really noticed from the start of the season is last year Mariah Jefferson pretty much had to get the ball and bring it up court. This year, you've got Gabby Williams gets a rebound and takes off. Nafisa Collier takes off. You know, they, it's so tough to guard when you have all of these players doing so many different things. David, I'm curious. You know, we all hear about UConn because of the national media, but I think what you're doing, your podcast and using technology as a vehicle, is really doing a good job with getting these other schools' uh, interest and uh, people finding out about them. Can you talk to that? Sure, it, it is a lot of fun. It, you know, the coaches in particular have embraced it and really are, are very welcome to coming on the podcast. And the long-form podcast gives me the opportunity to ask questions and get in-depth answers that you can't get in a short sound bite or you can't get their exact tone and inflection when they write it down. So, like, I had Jose Fernandez on, and we were able to discuss what it was, how he goes out and recruits the foreign players that he does and what it's like to discuss world events with them, and, and even what it's like to have UConn in your conference and what the effect is on the conference as a whole. So you're able to give a voice to some of the other teams that might not get that. Absolutely. I mean, it's great to be able to, you know, you'll, you'll hear when somebody does something wrong, one of the coaches, you'll hear about, you know, the Kim Mulkey incident with, uh, you know, talking about Baylor. And you don't get a chance to hear, though, about, a Jose, or you don't get the uh, Coach Abe from Central Florida, who I've had on before. You, you don't get to hear their stories, and it's nice to be able to give you know, them an opportunity to talk about what they're doing. Well, we appreciate you bringing that vehicle to women's basketball. David, I'm going to steal you for one more question, actually. I want to pick your brain about it. You've covered all these teams. You've covered the national landscape of college basketball. There's been a couple of teams that have come close this season to doing the unthinkable here tonight. But for USF to have a chance at ending UConn's winning streak at 106 games, what do you think will be the key to that? Well, I think the first thing is they have to play at their tempo. They can't get caught up with UConn running up and down the court. They're going to have to pick and choose when their fast breaks are. They have to defend, and they can't turn the ball over. But like anybody that plays UConn, you got to make your shots. I mean, they're playing a limited roster. They've had a bunch of players play 40 minutes in each game. And Kit Laxa, for example, is a great player, but she's shooting below 50%. You know, then you look and you see Nafisa Collier hitting 80%. Gabby Williams, you got to make your opportunities. It's what Central Florida did in the first half. you got to do it for a full 40, though, and that is awful hard to do against UConn. All right, well, that's some great insight there. Be sure to check out David on Dishin' and Swishin'. Coming up next, we're going to talk to a guy who has a pretty good idea of the college landscape himself. It's the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, Mike Oresco. Stay with us. We're Frontier Communications. We're dedicated to delivering the services that make your life easier every day, like ultra-fast internet, no data caps, and access to up to 150,000 video-on-demand titles. We also offer solutions to keep your business running smoothly and the tools you need to keep your digital life secure. We serve and support millions of communities across the country with premium products like Fios and Vantage by Frontier. Visit Frontier.com today to learn more about our best offer ever. center and that is over the wall and gone. There it is. Fly ball deep to left field. This one is gone. And it wasn't an easy road to get here. No, no question. They had to go through Cincinnati, Temple, and Memphis. Through the Change. I said, yes, you do the same. 
2017 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship. I'm Haley out and joined alongside the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, Mike Oresco. Mike, thanks for joining us. It's been another great tournament that Barbara's put on this year and with your help and leadership. Um, you've been around here the past few days. Just talk about the atmosphere that we've seen here at Mohegan Sun. Oh, there's no better spot. I mean, this is, uh, those are bright lights, aren't they? <laughs> there is no better spot than Mohegan for this tournament. It's, it's uh, you know, a, a remarkable thing. We draw over 30,000 people. The crowds have even been bigger this year. I think UConn streak has had something to do with that. And of course, UConn's been a reliable perennial and we never take a rooting interest, my goodness. But uh, just having their fans here, they support our other teams, Haley. They, uh, they come out for USF Temple. They come out for other games. I've been very impressed. The UConn crowds we sort of take for granted, but I've been impressed with the crowds who've come for the other games. You know, there's a lot to do here. It's a nice venue to have a, an event. So I'm very pleased with it, and I, I think the tournament's been terrific. It's been competitive games. Uh, that USF game was in doubt all the way yesterday with Temple. Uh, Tulane had a tough game. They could easily have been here. They gave UConn a heck of a game a few weeks ago. So, uh, you know, tonight should be a great game. You know, Jose and uh, Gino are old rivals, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. And the UConn fans are filing in as we speak. But you've had a chance to watch some of these games here this week. And you just kind of alluded to it. But there's been some teams that have given UConn a run for their money, not only here in the tournament, but in the regular season. Um, what do you have to kind of say about just the overall competitiveness of the conference and even some of those teams towards the bottom? They're starting to work their way up and close that gap. We're getting better. And it, you hope that a, a team like UConn will raise all boats. People will understand what they have to do to compete. And when you see players that UConn has, you try to get, you know, those kinds of players. And I think we're having more success. Uh, we have possibly four tournament teams this year. We don't know, three or four. That's obviously a big improvement. Uh, we're an 11-team league. Obviously, uh, UConn has helped uh, everybody in terms of just the exposure everyone gets, the excitement around the league. Uh, I don't think there's any question that the league has gotten better. And it's just going to continue to get better. You're right. Some of the lower tier teams are clearly improving, just like in our men's basketball. We're doing the same thing there. But women's basketball is in a good place right now. I like the competitiveness. I like the fact that we're recruiting well. I like the coaches. You know, Ron Yui took over at Houston has done a fine job. Katie Abrahamson has done a heck of a job at UCF. When you hire the right coaches, Haley, you're going to be successful. Same thing in the men with, you know, obviously Tubby Smith and Johnny Dawkins. So I'm very pleased with what we're doing. Plus, we have coaches like Lisa Stockton who have won, you know, hundreds of games and you know, Melissa McFerrin's done a fine job at, at Memphis. Tanya Cardoza's done a tremendous job at, uh, you know, at Temple. So I can't mention everyone, but we've got a lot of great coaches in this league. Yeah, no question. Some great coaches. Oh, but Jose Fernandez tonight. Uh, yeah, just to name a few. But the basketball doesn't end here tonight. We head to Hartford right after this for the men's basketball tournament. And that's been another league that's just had some really impressive basketball season. Taking a look at the bracket, we head to Hartford after this. SMU claimed that one seed this weekend, followed by Cincinnati and Houston. But talk about the state of men's basketball right now for our conference. I've told everyone who will uh, listen to me that we're one year away from having a breakout year like we did in football two years ago, when a lot of teams that had been in football, three and nine and two and 10, suddenly became winning teams. And we had five teams in the top 25 at various times during the year. The same thing will happen in basketball. Can't help but happen with Kelvin at Houston, Kelvin Sampson, with Tim Jankovic doing what he's done at SMU, Frank Haith with a very young team. Temple and UConn will bounce right back. Injuries and, and lack of depth, not gonna be a problem next year. Mick Cronin, Tubby Smith at Memphis, uh, Mike Dunleavy, uh, look at the job he's done. Look at what we're doing at, uh, at UCF with Johnny Dawkins. The league is only a short distance away from being one of the most competitive in the country. I'm very happy this year. We may not have, we may have three, possibly four tournament teams. Uh, you know, it's always possible we'll only have two. Somebody could, of course, as you know, steal a bid in our tournament. But we have two of the finest teams in the country in Cincinnati and SMU. The rest of the league, I said, I'm very honest about this. It's always good to be, you know, measured and, and, and level about these kinds of things. We have a lot of good teams, but not great teams yet. But we're going to in another year or two. This is going to be a really, really competitive basketball conference. Well, we're looking forward to a great tournament next week in Hartford and a great game right here behind us tonight. Thanks for your time, Commissioner Resco. We enjoyed having you on the show. My pleasure, Haley, and you're absolutely right. It's going to be very competitive because there are a lot of teams that can win and beat other teams. Thank you again for having me. Thank great you very to see much. you. Thank Take you care. very much. Well, coming up next,
stay with us. Our pregame show rolls on. More championship coverage up next. Tickets are now on sale for the 2017 Frontier Communications American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford. Be there as all 11 American teams compete for the conference crown and an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Single game and championship weekend ticket packages are on sale this month and can be purchased online at ExcelCenter.com or by telephone at 877-522-8499. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us, the University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is our backyard. This is Yukon. It's Connecticut. You, you can you can prepare, but they always will surprise. But I think that uh, every chance, with the every chance we have playing them, uh, I think we we can we can do it. We can we can make it a tough battle because it's the third game of the year playing them, and I mean, that's the third time, third lucky one, or how's the saying? <laughs> third time's the charm. <laughs> yeah, third time's the charm. Exactly that one. Thank you. It would mean a lot, and I think, you know, just adds to the culture and the tradition of UConn, and, you know, now we have our name on something, and it's just uh, another goal that we have, and hopefully um, we have a good game tomorrow, and it'll be a step forward into the tournament. It would mean so much. Um, I know not just for me, but for everyone. I, I, I just I don't know what to say. Like, it would be so amazing to do it. It would mean a lot. I think it just shows how hard our teams work this year, and, you know, hopefully we come out with a win. It will be just huge, but first, when we're going to take every 10 minutes. We're going to go hard every 10 minutes. It's four quarters, 40 minutes to play, and it's, it's going to be tough. We will have to battle and grind for every, every, every ball and everything. So it, it means a lot. It will mean a lot, and it doesn't matter. Like today, we can, we talk, we can talk about it, but tomorrow is the real deal. No question, it would mean so much to all of these players to bring home an American Conference Championship, some playing in their fourth and some playing just in their first. But let's hear what it would mean to these two head coaches to bring home a conference championship. Don't ever, I think, want to rely so heavily on one player that the other players don't feel comf comfortable enough or confident enough that, you know, hey, I can, I can win the game. I can help win the game. So the fact that we can put four players out there and, and have them four different parts of the floor and spread everybody out, that's difficult for any team, any team to match. And they might be able to, to be successful for a short period of time, but not for a whole game. And then lastly, you can kind of say, I guess, there's three, tra three chapters to a season. You have that first part of the season and you aim to do your best in that. And then you hit the conference tournament, and you always right. want to win a championship there. And then it's the NCAAs. But right. as you head to the final for the fourth straight year, what would it mean to you to put a cap on the conference season and win a championship? Well, that's exactly how we, we, we approach it with our team. Um, there are three distinct parts of a, of a season. Um, and we did a great job during the regular season, even more so than maybe anyone expected. Um, but then you got to play three games in three days, and you got to kind of prove it again. And then after you're done that, you know, now you got to, you know, kind of reboot the whole thing. And now you, you got the most important part of the season coming up after you've already done all this other work. Um, so that's why you don't want to look too far ahead. You know, you just want to, okay, where are we now? Where are we going? Where are we going to be tomorrow? And so, so far up to this point, our team has answered every every challenge and. Um, I, I don't see 
uh, I don't see any reason why we, we shot the ball a lot better. We scored. You know, that helps. You know, we, but we're going to have to do a great job on the glass and defending, you know, Gab Gabby and the Fisa. But, um, you know, every shot that they take has to be contested. But they're a very, very good basketball team. And it's a great opportunity for our program on national TV. Yeah, third year in a row, playing on Monday night, not too bad, and with a different team this year. But what do you think that says just about the sustained success that your program has continued? Well, that's that's where the, that's the expectation. That's where our program's at. It's it's expected for to us to to play on Monday night and to play in and, and to go to the NCAA tournament every year. Third time in three years, UConn in the final. Obviously, a tough task. Every team this year has wanted to knock them off. But if it happens to be you guys, what would winning this American Championship mean? Well, let me think about that. I'll talk to you after the game. No, it'd be. I mean, it'd be. It'd be a huge win for our program. It'd be and and I think. Uh, we definitely get a lot of attention around the country, but you know we got to rest up and uh, get these guys to bed because they're going to play a lot of minutes tomorrow as well. No question, USF would get quite a bit of attention if they were to knock off the UConn Huskies tonight after winning 106 straight games. But Helen, something Coach Oriyama alluded to in his interview yesterday, and you can probably relate to this as a coach. He views each season as three chapters. One is the regular season, chapter two is the conference tournament, and then chapter three is the NCAA tournament. As a coach, how do you view that just kind of with tonight's game, winning this game to close this chapter and build some momentum heading into the NCAA tournament? Well, I think the important thing is that you have to take it one game at a time. I mean, you can only play the game that's in front of you, so he's right about that. You just want to make sure and pay attention to detail, do the things that you can do, the little things so that you can win the game that's in front of you. And looking back to this season, these two teams have met twice, and they're meeting for a third time tonight. Helen, earlier this season when USF played UConn, it didn't go so well. But the second time around, you saw some improvement. How tough is it to beat a team three times? Well, it's really tough to beat a team three times because you know everything about the team. So it's going to come down to it, and I know this is cliche, but you got to execute the details. It's a team that's going to make the least amount of mistakes. And for a program to make it to this game three years in a row, as a coach, like you know that that's very hard to accomplish season in, season out, with different players especially. What does that say about the consistency and the tradition that both of these basketball programs have? Well, it's a tradition, obviously, that USF has of late building with their foreign players. But with UConn, I mean, it's amazing the job that Geno's done with different players, especially this year when they weren't expected to. All right, well, thanks a lot, Helen. Tip-off is just moments away here at Mohegan Sun Arena. We'll see you after the game.